previously on TA Star Trek Journey. I'm not really a migraine person, but it's been pretty bad. You don't uh, think it's from that accident you had a couple months back, do you? It, it could be from that. I, I still am kind of fuzzy on what even happened that day, but... So I came down the stairs, and I saw you, you were sitting at uh, your desk, and you were just face down on your keyboard. Okay, so then what? A grateful audience. Born out of blood. They'll never know it. Because we watch it multiple times before we even record, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, they'll never know it, so. Because you won't be alive to tell them. <gasps> I won't be alive to tell them. Alex. What? I don't think I can do this anymore. This doesn't feel real. It's the end of the entire show. I can't believe it. No, end of season three. The show has begun. And now... The end of the beginning. The end of the beginning, yeah. From the show really finding its footing. But I think us too. I mean, I think in the last... Uh, what, eight, nine months we've watched these first three seasons from a production standpoint, a reaction standpoint, a video format standpoint. We've gone through a lot of changes and upgrades just like the show has done. And, um, you know, we could, it could still be better. There will still be changes, obviously, in the future, both with the show and with us. But it's just been really fun seeing this arc of target audience as well as TNG through these first three seasons. I think that this is probably the most hyped up episode since City on the Edge of Forever. Uh, really? It might be more hyped up than that, but... That puts so much pressure on yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. It's like sometimes you're sitting there watching... Some, or every episode I sit there and I'm like... I get that feeling like... Am I not getting it or is it not good? I start to think that I'm the problem. And not the episode, but... It's, I'm never the problem. So. Yeah, we're never the problem. We're never the problem. We're gonna let all that go. I know people get worried when we have expectations, but it was literally unavoidable for this one. We've heard about this episode since starting TNG. Uh... Maybe even since starting TOS, you know, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> I would put Wrath of Khan up there with those two in terms of hype, but in terms of epi TV episodes, I would say this and City on the Edge of Forever are the two that stick out. Really? Uh, and then I would put Spock's brain up there in a negative way, people saying how bad it was, uh, and we thought it was fun. But yeah, man, uh, I'm basically stalling because I'm genuinely, I don't want to say afraid, but I'm so like anxious to watch this. That I have no idea what it... I know nothing. I have no idea what's going to happen. It's a 45-minute episode like all of them. Why is it so special? Like, we're, I guess, about to find out. And I think it's probably just because, like you said, it's that begin end of the beginning, beginning of the end uh, for what people say TNG and Star Trek, this gold period of Star Trek is. I'll stop yapping. But you got anything else? Uh, no, season three has definitely shown me why the show is what it is and regarded is as it is and gave me some of my favorite Star Trek episodes and moments ever out of you know, everything we've seen so far um i'm bought in on the characters and i'm ready to be wrecked let's go absolutely uh i did want to just read one thing before we start because we haven't seen this yet and we have no idea what we're going to think of this i think this is very appropriate uh as of recording this was actually commented today on our youtube by brock tree four so congratulations brock tree four uh this might be my favorite youtube comment i've ever got please remember you may believe that Star Trek is a sci-fi show with great drama and character-driven moments. Josh and Alex believe Star Trek is a great drama and character-driven show with sci-fi moments. Sometimes the sci-fi plots are more forced than others, and there are some stories that just focus on drama and characters that fall flat. And every once in a while, you have an episode that we can all agree is good. And that's what I'm hoping for today, and I think that comment is spot on. Let's see what right, we got. quit stalling, let's go. Great opening shot. Verify these are accurate coordinates for the new Providence colony. Coordinates verified, sir. You're at the center of town. I haven't been this excited since the motion picture. Oh! <laughs> okay, all right. No, I genuinely was this excited. Motion picture and City on the Edge of Forever. I, I would say those are the two. Maybe a muck time as well. Okay. 
big asteroid uh, crater? Maybe. What a, a brief hook there just like oh yeah very fast no idea what's going on there's been episodes where it goes on for five minutes and forgot it hasn't ha the hook hasn't happened uh, the intro hasn't happened yet here we go for the last time to boldly go where no one has gone before i guess i would put the uh the pilot of tng up there as well oh yeah that's true that was an insane feeling watching a uh, new star oh, trek fi finally starting it yeah, yeah. we've known they were coming for over a year we've thrown every resource we have into this but still and you're convinced it is the borg borg mentioned it's our poker night, Admiral. It's always an open seat for you. Another time, Commander. Your captain and I have a lot to cover. That's the doctor from the original Battlestar Galactica. When Shelby came into tactical, every Admiral's uncle had a take on this Borg business. Michael Piller wrote it? She cut through it. She put us on track. Cliff Ball! Who else but Ball? <laughs> One's available. The Melbourne. It's his if he wants it. Hasn't he told you? He'll make a fine captain, JP. He didn't tell him? This is the third time we pulled out the captain's chair for Riker. He doesn't want to leave. He just won't sit down. Nice. He's hurting his career by staying put. And if I were you, I'd kick him in the rear end for his own good. Interesting. I intend to convince Captain Picard that I'm the right choice for the job. Job? Which job? Yours, of course. I'm sorry. I heard that you were leaving. If I were, I'm sure you'd be the first to know. <laughs> little rivalry going on? Now I'm like fan casting, like him running his own ship. Like, would he still be in the show? Fold. Again. I like this shot. There's your 10. 100. Oh! He's got the straight flush, folks. Not necessarily. Commander Riker may be bluffing, Wesley. <laughs> well, I've only got two pair, but I've got to see your whole card. I'll call. <laughs> you got him. And she beat him. Called his bluff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to gambling, Wesley. <laughs> Riker really thought he could get away with that big of a bluff. Damn. Mr. Data and our guest appear to be tardy. Sir, Commander Shelby and Data beamed down to the planet's surface an hour ago. On whose authority? On hers. <sighs> Riker's going through it. <laughs> Even though he literally has a captain ship waiting for him. But he doesn't want to leave. That's so interesting. I got it the first time, and like even the second time, I was like, okay. But it's like, how, how long is he going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I get it. He loves the crew. He loves the Enterprise, you know. We've had some interesting results. Commander Shelby. Blames Jordy. <laughs> Walk with me, Commander. Amazing set here. The soil contains the same magnetic resonance traces. That's our footprint. There's no doubt anymore. It is the Borg. All right. Oh boy. It is pretty wild that they've been dropping their name, but they haven't even been back yet. Since, since their, their one episode, yeah. Yeah. Well, what the hell are you still doing? <laughs> Sir? You've been offered the Melbourne. I've decided not to pursue that commission at this time. That's why I didn't tell him. You're ready to work without a net. You're ready to take command. And you know, Enterprise will go along just fine without you. Poor choice of words, Picard. You're happy here. Happier than I've ever known you to be. So, it comes down to a simple question. What do you want, Will Riker? I mean, she's a, you know, a perfect person to talk to about it, so. True. You knock out one generator and another one takes over without interruption. What kind of damage would we have to do to shut them down? Trying to deepen your voice there, Wesley? Yeah. I think we should look at modifying the plasma phaser design. Commander, I think we should call it a <laughs> If we have a confrontation with the Borg without improving our defenses... If we have a confrontation, I don't want a crew fighting the Borg at the same time they're fighting their own fatigue. I mean, what he's saying is fair, but I don't know if he's p pushing a little harder on her because she, he knows she wants to be first officer and have his job. <laughs> yeah, she made him one suggestion. He's like, all right, <laughs> that's enough. We're done here. How long would it take to get there at Borg 9? One hour, 17 minutes, sir. Make it so. We're coming with every available starship to assist, Captain. Every starship? The Enterprise. Always the closest ship. Yeah, they and can the get there ship. in one hour. Yeah. The only ship. What's your assessment of our potential effectiveness? It's a shot in the dark, Captain. But for now, it's the best we can do. Just going to take the Borg head on. By, the, by themselves. No cue to bail you out that we know of. On the screen. Magnify. Oh, there it is. A uh, little score that was. Yeah. We have engaged the Borg. Got their own theme? 
they're building the Borg up like it's like uh, the Romulans. I mean, the, the build up of their return, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I would argue even bigger. Like, they've built them up like they're, you know, even a higher level than Klingons and Romulans. And they're like this. Because remember, they were from that part of space that they'd never been to. John Luke Picard, captain of the Starship Enterprise Registry NCC-1701D. I thought they were interested in human life forms, only our technology. Their priorities seem to have changed. What did you notice that Riker did the Picard maneuver? Shield modulation has failed. They've locked on. So once again, they bluffed and uh, didn't work. And it's like the Borg aren't even one to even yeah. like talk, negotiate. They're just like, all right, well, we're doing it. The games are going to work with me. Still no damage to the Borg vessel, sir. Oh, that's someone. Someone's dead. Outer hull breach. They are cutting into the hull. Engineering section. I remember, was it last time that they like cut a hole in the Enterprise? Saving doors to core. Come on, let's move it, people. Let's move it. Decompress Deck 36 section. All right, Indiana Jones. It's like a mall store closing. <laughs> Fluctuate phaser resonance frequencies. Random settings keep them changing. Don't give them time to adapt. I guess Bro did her research. Warp 9, course. 151, mark. 330. Engage. Instead of possibly looking out of line and speaking over Captain and Riker, he's like, you know what? Just, you know, do this. But it's like they can see, they can see her. What are you doing? Hull rupture in main engineering. The damage is pretty heavy. We lost a lot of good people down there. Oh. Eleven dead, eight more unaccounted for, Captain. Oh man. Unaccounted for. They're, you know, there's. Yeah. Even though they said only it was the outer hull, so I'm not sure. Jump to impulse. <laughs> Get out of here. Excuse me. ship is continuing scans, attempting to locate us. Good. As long as they're looking for us, they won't hurt anyone else. Is that all you got? We may need the power from the saucer's impulse engines. But it would give them more than one target to worry about. It's too great a risk. I'd like the captain to make that decision, sir. Commander, I bring all the alternatives to the captain's attention. That'll be all. But I won't be bringing that one. <laughs> She's a formidable presence, to say the least, but I'm convinced she can help us here, Commander. I am, too. Don't worry about it. I can handle Shelby. That's a good little scene there. Okay. Come. <laughs> what was he doing with the port? Oh, okay. That was, that was a good shot. <laughs> I thought, was he just smiling at the wall? <laughs> Any of your concerns about her plan? Oh, jeez. Overstepping. I want you to consider her plan as a fallback position. Make the necessary preparations. Very good, sir. Went over his head. Oh. He told you he, he was gonna tell the captain the, the alternatives. It's like, let's go talk on the elevator. Yeah. Decade, battle bridge. Halt. Yeah. You do an end run around me again, I'll snap you back so hard you'll think you're a first year cadet again. I suppose that's why someone like you sits in the shadow of a great man. Oh. Proceed to deck eight. If you can't make the big decisions, Commander, I suggest you make room for someone who can. Oh, God! Oh, man, it's tough, but it's like, I feel like he deep down knows she has a point, which is why he doesn't even have anything to say back to her. Yeah. But damn, ruthless. <laughs> that was so good, I couldn't even do my, who's holding out the damn elevator <laughs> joke? <laughs> they still should have had it happen. Yeah, with Bones now. Yeah. Old Bones? How did you get on this ship? <laughs> They call them old bones. <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, shit. Nice introductory shot. Cliff Bowl. Something of a tradition gun. Captain touring the ship for a battle. Before a hopeless battle, if I remember the tradition correctly. Oh. Mm. As long as there's a handful of you to keep the spirit alive, you will prevail, even if it takes a millennium. Now, the Borg, like, destroyed her people, right? Her, yeah. Her home planet? Yeah. It's interesting how she's a super powerful being, and she's just on the Enterprise to be the bartender, and it's like she could die at any time. <laughs> like, she has no control over any of this. Ready phases, load forward torpedo bays. Engage. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> hey, hey! Yeah, hey! <laughs> Tractor beam has locked on. Oh, shit. Oh, you're 
you're done. What? Oh. Whoa! Whoa. Oh. It's no use. They've already adapted to the new frequency. That's crazy. Oh! oh! Get the hell out of here. Come on, Worf. God damn it. Oh. They're gonna plug him into the Matrix. Nice. The board ship is disengaging, leaving at warp speed. Maintain pursuit. All right, Riker. You gotta sit in the chair. It's your time. 9.4, 9.6. Stay with him. It's gonna come down to does he, does he do the risky decision or does he play it safe? Coordinates they have set. They are on a direct course to sector 001, the Terran system. Earth. Oh, shit. On a journey <laughs> to Earth. <laughs> All right, we get to see more of the Borg set. I always like that. Remember the Borg babies? Shit, this is probably them growing up. They, they age faster. I will resist you with my last ounce of strength. Strength is irrelevant. Resistance is futile. Is that where resistance is futile comes from? Is, it might be. Did they originate it? It might be, yeah. Because I was like thinking about it. I'm like, wait, I, I don't even know what that's from, but it's like a known phrase. It has been decided that a human voice will speak for us in all communications. You have been chosen to be that voice. They like they like his voice. <sighs> also, he's a good representative of people, and people would listen to him. But yeah, it's a good thing they didn't choose Data. <laughs> I'm leaving an away team over there to get the captain back. We'll find a way to get them out of warp. Ensign Crusher, you continue to assist Mr. LaForge. You can transport over there while they're in warp. Until the return of Captain Picard, you are in command of the Enterprise. We're in a state of war, and your place is on the bridge. All right, Troy. <sighs> God. Then Dr. Crusher will lead the away team. <laughs> like picks anybody besides her. Goes up to Troy. If you ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll snap you back so fast. <laughs> You'll be a first year therapist. <laughs> yeah, back on Beta Z. Commander, no unnecessary risks. Clear? Very clear, sir. Shall be out. We've matched warp velocity for transport, Commander. There you go. Gotta match their warp. Oh, that's good to know. I love the little reminders like that. Don't be risky, like as if she's gonna be in a situation and go to do something and be like, wait. Don't be risky. That's not a critique of this show. Humans actually talk like that. Like, yeah. It's always like bothered me. What if we look at this from the mosquito's point of view? What is your idea? If we sting them in a tender spot, they might stop for a minute to scratch. Oh, wow. In here. That's not the same group they walked in front of, was it? I don't remember. <laughs> That'd be funny. Yeah, we've gone in one big circle. <laughs> Give me a baby. Oh, well, that's not good. I think we know what that means. He's naked. They turned him into a baby. Oh. We must restart you from your infancy. <laughs> Come on, yeah. You all four gotta do it. Cross oh. the streams. Oh, there we go. Oh, just two? Okay. Oh, they're pissed. What was that? I don't know how they're going to get out of this. Sir, they've done it. The Borg ship is dropping out of war. Oh, there, they did it. <laughs> All right, there's one. Oh, shields up. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, they got three. Okay. Whoa, nice landing there. Just his legs. <laughs> he went all out for his his part. <laughs> that looked like Brent Spiner. I wonder if he was like, let me dress up as one. I wouldn't doubt it. John Luke. <laughs> You're cooked. Captain. The Picardinator. Do you think he'd still have his voice? Because they wanted to use his voice. Whoa! Enterprise, get us out of here. I love the red dot. <laughs> red dot sight. I love the 180. The card's all dressed up, and Riker's in the captain's chair, as opposed to the uh, <laughs> Riker dressed up. If we could get him back to the ship, I might be able to restore- This is our only chance to destroy them. If they get back into warp, our weapon is useless. 
Sir, we are being hailed by the Borg. Is it gonna be Picard? <laughs> I am Locutus of Borg. Your life as it has been is over. From this time forward, you will service us. Mr. Worf, fire. What? Oh, fuck off! No! No way! Are you serious? You mother... You pieces of gar... Ugh! Shut up! Oh. Are you... Get the f- And imagine that being, uh, you, you gotta wait till the, uh, <laughs> the end of summer. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't even know, uh, you know, in real time if they knew, I mean, I'm sure they knew there was gonna be a next season, I don't know, uh, you know, but, I mean, start off the bat, we didn't even address this beforehand. That was the best season finale <laughs> of Star Trek so far. Before we even really get into the episode, yes. it being competent, <laughs> it's, a, it's the best season finale. <laughs> I mean, Operation Annihilate was good, but like, Ugh. yeah. So I think we could say that safe enough. Um, <laughs> first, first ever Star Trek cliffhanger season finale. There's only been one other cliffhanger, and it was uh, the Menagerie way back in yeah, season yeah. one. Yeah, and that was like what episode twelve? Uh, yeah, 12? Uh, yeah, eleven and twelve. So I mean, um. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I have a lot of questions. I feel like my our discussion is going to be all questions that are just going to be answered when we watch season four. So it's kind of like, you know, I'll try to not just make it all questions, but let, let's talk about, yeah. I guess, first just first impression of it. Uh, yeah, I love this episode. Nice, slow start. And I have that feeling like, okay, the episode's starting off slow. And I get that, wait, just wait, be patient. It can't be, you know, crazy stuff right off the bat. I'm like, okay, we're just... We're just uh, moving all the pawns, getting the pieces going. And as it started to go, I didn't even realize how much time has passed. Because I'm like, oh my god. we got, we got like ten minutes left. We're going to go into this final battle. It's going to be great. And then <laughs> when it fades out, I'm like, oh, a commercial. <laughs> and it's like, it's over? <laughs> oh, you thought it was like the last commercial The break? last commercial. That's what I thought, yeah. I, I think for some reason I caught on when it went to black. It, I, I might be wrong, but it felt like more of a cut rather than like a fade, you know, like the swell up fade. Okay. Maybe, I, I'm not sure what it is, but, uh, so I was, I was like, oh, that's the end, isn't it? And then, you know, to be continued, I'm like, <laughs> okay, fuck off. Um, oh my God. I, I love season ending. Well, it's like, I love the season ending cliffhanger in this instance because it's never been done. So it's such like a ballsy thing. Um, it, you know, I guess you could say it was a gamble. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Um, man, I don't even know what to say. That's not a question. Let me think. Okay. Did uh, I like the episode? Yes. Extremely well directed. Good job, Cliff Bull, as always. Uh, Michael Pillar, I think it said, wrote it, which it's like, was he just like, all right, let, you know, I'm coming because he's been producer the whole time. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. it's like, he just come in like, all right, I'm writing this one. Yeah, it happens. They come in every now and then. Yeah. Um, I, I really like the whole story, really. I mean, obviously the big moments with Picard, but, like, the story is really focused on Riker. Riker not taking the command yet. Once again, when we start the episode, he's already decided he's not taking it. He didn't even tell Picard about the offer, probably because he knew Picard would tell him to take it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I really like the whole story being about it leading up to, at the end, I, I, I'm curious of people's interpretation. My interpretation is, even in that moment, Riker doesn't want to do the risky thing. He doesn't want to put everything on hold to save picard's life he wants to take the safe way out they have this one chance to destroy the borg he wants to take it I, but i mean what, what do you think of that is that how you interpret it or like what's your thought on it yeah because you know how it goes the poker scene early on usually mimics or will mirror and help tell a story later on uh, yeah like because right just blowing up the ship is the safer thing to do to save lives yeah instead of uh, waiting and trying to rescue Picard a different way. So, yeah, maybe something happens the next episode where he, he flips, but so far it ends on his safe option that he's been doing. His safe op option that he's been doing his entire career. Um, but I got to say, like early Riker, like he was like go getter and all this, and he like, wants to prove himself, like with his warf, uh, with this Klingon episode, and finally getting to see a different side of him where he was like not confident and like talking to uh, Troy and Ten Forward with like 
like the first time we've ever seen him like that, really talking like, like what am I, like what am I doing? Him not being sure. I'm like, oh my god, it's we haven't seen that side of him. It was great to see. Helped to uh, mold his uh, his character more because he's done a lot in this season, but uh, this is the deepest we've gone. I, I'd, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I 100% agree. Um, I, I don't know how much more to get into here versus the discussion, so I'll just say, um, overall, obviously I didn't know what to expect because I didn't know anything. Uh, awesome that the Borg finally returned after a few named mentions. They're finally back. They're treated as this huge threat, which they've tried to do that with Klingons, with Romulans, but because they were just like, their first appearance in the series of TOS was just like, here they are, like, that's it, you know? So you can't introduce them again. Like, they tried in TNG with the Romulans, right? But at the end of the day, we've seen them. The Borg, this is their second appearance. Like, they still have the time if they want to build them up, and that's exactly what they've done. Um, it, it, yeah, I don't want to get into too much. So, I get, you know, obviously when we do the discussion, we'll go over our thoughts on Shelby. We'll go over our thoughts on uh, the Borg, obviously the ending, and uh, I guess make some predictions of what we think is going to happen. Uh, it's going to be a different type of discussion because it's with with it being a cliffhanger. But uh, I'm excited to jump into it. So yeah, it's going to be good. It was great. I liked it. Alex and Josh, the Why'd you do it, Alex? I'm sorry, Josh. You needed to be stopped. I did what needed to be done. Well, guess what? You didn't finish the job. You're right. I didn't. Not yet! Ah, Thor Love and Thunder. You didn't like this one, did you, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> I do my best to make this channel successful, Alex. Make the people who watch, subscribe, even pay us money entertained. And you say that needs to be stopped? Maybe you need to be stopped. For good. I always knew it would come to this, Josh. When I had the idea to start this channel, I knew it would eventually lead to this. A fight to the death in your basement. Too lazy to use this, huh? That's all right. Your keen sucked anyways. You 
You want to die for these shows? Fine. <laughs> What's 15 more years? <laughs> I can always get another best friend. Start another channel. <laughs> Alex, wait! Look over there! It's Mike from Red Letter Media! Alex? What? I don't think I can do this anymore. Me either. My back hurts. Not the fight. I could do this all day. I mean all of this over what to watch for the channel. This isn't what we had in mind when we started. You're right, Josh. We started this channel to watch stuff we want. And we found Star Trek and we fell in love with that. But that doesn't mean we're going to love everything that Star Trek fans want us to watch. I mean, th did you see that list? We weren't going to watch any of that. And Buffy Season 2? There's absolutely no way. Star Trek continues? No. And, and, and what, what is Red Dwarf? What the hell is that? Actually, I do want to watch Red Dwarf. What is it? I don't know, like a British space time travel thing? It's 20 minute episodes. Oh, we can watch that. You're right though. I gotta stop trying to please everybody. We just gotta go back to what you and I want to watch. I'd mostly say what I want, but yeah, I agree. Besides Star Trek, we should watch what we want, when we want, and post it after watching the entire season. Really? Watch the whole season before posting it? We should be real G's and move in silence, like lasagna. What? I don't know. What is this? Josh, what is this writing? Can we be done? I think they get it. We are going to do what we want. Well, I had a few pages left. <sighs> Look at this. We weep and embrace. What the hell is that? It's a reference to Picard and Beverly in the Sarek episode, but... Yeah, I guess you're right. This is good enough. We should probably clean this up. You mean you should clean this up? I'm off the clock! Damn, that bagpipe funeral part would have been pretty funny. Hey, wait, Alex! Another TNG episode Now in the books Did TA hate it? Or did they get hooked? Will they ever get it? We may never know TNG season 4 Let's go! Warp's me They make, they pause for big moments and make clever jabs What half of the scene they will always yap They've been at this for years with many more to come Join this journey, set your face to stun Warp speed, engage, engage Warp speed, engage, engage Warp speed, engage, engage Warp speed, let's go Should have caught Laughing loud as plots unfold In this journey, brave and bold Exposition missed, yet still they shine The sarcastic charm you can't decline Guided by stars that pass the line Josh and Alex in cosmic time Warms me Engage, engage Warms me All right, Josh, what are you watching today? Where are you going? You see? All right, dude, whatever. <laughs>